You know, some people age like a fine wine, and some people age like a can of special brew left on a hot windowsill. Whichever one you are, get ready to talk about those pesky little emotions of yours, because it's time for another episode of I've Had a Rosé, Let's Talk About Feelings. Please welcome your host, Sam Lake. It was me the whole time. Hi everyone, we're back in the studio, hello, welcome to another episode of I've Had a Rosé, Let's Talk About Feelings, with me, your host Sam Lake, and today I'm joined by one of my favourite people, uh, Lauren Pattinson! Hello! Hi! How are you? I'm alright, big fan, big fan, love your work. Big fan, yes. Um, how are you? I'm very good. Good, lovely. Very good, I it- took a different train route to Edinburgh. We're, we'll have to be careful about not talking too much about trains because we could go oh, on. We could hit trains. Well, because you've already you already said train, mega bus, very triggering terms for any comedian. Absolutely. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> um, although you did say I won't say it because it's your little secret, little secret. But you told me about a travel hack for the mega bus, which I, I think did, very yes. indulgent. Love snobs, snobs. It involves throwing a crowbar at one of the tires so you get it for free. <laughs> um, Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having Very me. Very excited to have you. Let's talk about your drink first. Yes. I will say we're recording this at, is it like half two? So perfectly fine time to be drinking such it a thing, is. I think. It's a lovely sunny Saturday. It's a lovely sunny, it is sunny. Yeah. Does the sun ever make you think like, I could have a little drink? Exactly. It does, doesn't sun it? Sun smiling, I'm smiling. Yeah. You've chosen a drink. I have heard of it and I can't think if I've had it before. Mm. I think. I recognise because I grew up in a pub, so I've yes. seen the bottle on the shelf lots of times before. Hooch. A little bit of hooch. And for anyone who's listening in many, in one of the countries that's not the United Kingdom, hello, Denmark. <laughs> We're in the top 40 in Denmark recently. No big deal. <laughs> Hi, Alphabet. Would love to collab. Um, <laughs> I, um, cause sometimes, cause hooch is like a slang term for just like booze in general, I think. Oh. Well, I think it is. I think it's used as that. Hooch. 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 I think it might... It's very 90s, isn't it? I think so, yeah. 90s. I feel like hooch is... It, it, you could use describe, like, moonshine or something. Yeah. You know, like... You know, or, like, there was an episode of... Do you remember that show where it was Bad Girls? The Girls in oh, Prison. Yes. And they made hooch in they the toilet. They made it in... Yes. And they, like, used to decant it into old tampon containers. Amazing. And then um, somebody, boss. somebody um, died because they didn't make it properly. Oh, no, that's a health and safety <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> You girl boss too close to the sun. And then you died. Um, so, hooch. Is there any particular reason that you fancy a hooch? I unironically like hooch. I feel like it's a drink people drink ironically. Yeah. But I really enjoy it. When I used to live in London, you know how there's like, the one thing I think London does very well is all the little corner shops and the newsagents. Yes. Very well stocked. Good. Very well very stocked. Very good. Don't really have that as much back home. And there was a little one by me, and I think it was like, say, three cans of hooch for a fiver. So I'd always get it, go mm. in after a gig. I wouldn't have all three cans that night. Not... Not a renegade, but I would get my three cans <laughs> yeah. and I would have maybe like one after a gig or something and I would do it all the time. And then there was one day I went in and as I walked in, the guy just went, no, 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 we don't have any hooch left. You bought it all. <laughs> and then I thought, oh no, I'm hooch girl. Like they must know when you, I come in. You're I'm the girl with the hooch. I'm, I'm just the hoochie mama. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I had a similar thing with the uh, chicken cottage because oh. after work I would go in there, get my six barbecue wings on a bed of fries and a little can of strawberry. Beautiful. Um, is it the Miranda? I was going to say Magina, and it, <laughs> but it is what you said. Yeah. Um, and then one day I went in and they were like, we will give this to you again. Because it was only three pounds, it was really cheap. Yeah. But they were like, please, go have dinner somewhere else. <laughs> this isn't good for you. You know when a business is turning away your customer? A business is even an intervention. The man you? at Chicken Cottage understands my mental health better than I yeah. do. Yeah. God bless. Um, God bless. It smells great. It does. And I don't know. So do you normally have... There's like, is it a lemon flavour? It's like, I call it alcohol. Oh, it is alcoholic lemonade, basically, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, essentially. Lemonade. But this one is pink. But then they've, they've branched out, so they do pink hooch now. A little pink they hooch. They do blue hooch, or blooch, as I like to call it. Blooch. <laughs> <laughs> and I did see orange hooch in the shop the other day. But I'm not a fan of orange flavoured hooch. <laughs> so we got pooch, we got blooch, and we got hooch. <laughs> All the hooches. <laughs> An hooch for every mood. An hooch for every occasion. Before we try it, um... You said you are unironically love hooch. Yeah. So are you not the type of person who um, gets, like, embarrassed about your drink order? Oh, absolutely not. No. Who absolutely has the time? Not. I walk into a bar and see they've got hooch, and I'm like, my people. <laughs> my people. They're blowing the dust off it as they bring it out the fridge because I'm the only person who's ordered it in however many years. I will say, when I stocked the shelves in my dad's pub growing up, not many fans of Baby Jam. Oh. 
yeah. yeah. Something about a hopping reindeer on a bottle just <laughs> doesn't make people thirsty no. like it used to. No. Well, should we have a little sip? Yeah. Let's have a little sip. Reach, oh. reach over. Um, you've got, which bad. mug have you got? You've I got the I'm that. on horse mug. That's a little stick of butter on, oh, a, on a horse. And, oh, a, nice. and I've got our sponsor's auto glass repair, auto glass <laughs> replace. Um, I do. Okay, bottoms up. Mm. Oh, that's lovely. That's worryingly yeah. drinkable. Yeah, she's fizzy, she's fun. We like. And what do you think of the drink? <laughs> <laughs> I can tell this is one where, like, you go out for a quiet drink with your mates and, like, not be too silly, it's only we'll just have a hooch and then it's oh. 6 a.m. and you're fighting in the kebab shop. I don't fight in the kebab shop, I make friends. <laughs> You're a lover, not a fighter. We were in, what was that place that we went to a couple of weeks ago? Number one. Number one kebab shop. Oh, and was it number one kebab? What? I actually don't remember what I had. I got a pizza. <laughs> I got a pizza at a number one kebab shop. That is bold. Very that ballsy bold. of me. And we fit, we just done a show here. I say just done a show. It was two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there was a stag do in and the stag do... Ah. Ended up in number one kebab as no. well. No, I've had that before on Socky Hall Street in Glasgow and they bought me my cheesy chips. Oh. And I was very happy. They didn't offer to buy us anything. Well, should have done better. <laughs> Hope the wedding fails. Yes. Um, lovely. Oh, this is going to go down nice, a treat. It's isn't it? And I've got a day ahead of me as well. Oh, got not a day anymore. ahead of me. You've got not shows anymore. to do. I do. I have three shows. Do you know what? You'll need the show. Oh, because you'll do it. Yes, because you're doing got a little, little whip. whip. Got a little, little whippy whip. whip. I am, yes. Lovely. Um, okay. We're all we're all loose. We're ready, we're comfortable, we've got a hooch and a mug. Let's talk about your chosen subject. Yes. Something that maybe helps us understand who you are and how you engage with your feelings. Lovely topic. Very nice. And I, I, and I can see why you've come to this one. Dogs. I love dogs. Yes, you I do. I love dogs so much. You've got I, a lovely dog. I've got a lovely dog. He yeah. drank water from your glass. Yes, he did. <laughs> yeah. What? Very much what's mine is his. <laughs> Very much. I th- I would probably say that about lots of friends' dogs. Yes. I'd be like, you know what? They can have whatever they want. He's very good. They can good. have whatever they want. He's very good. I He's a lovely little boy. I dogs, though. I was terrified. So did you grow up with dogs? No. My sister got asthma, which is very rude, if you ask me. <laughs> very insensitive. Well, ironically, too sensitive. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> so we never had pets. I think I was scared of dogs because I didn't have a dog. Sure. And then I started to look at a lot of dogs and I was like, man, they are quite cute. I do like mm. them. So then I had that weird mix of when you really like something, but you're also quite scared of it. So I was that annoying kid where I was like, oh, that looks really cute. And then it would come yes. here and I'd be like, ah. Um, and then my nana got a dog and this was my gateway dog. Mm. This was my gateway. Fat Jack Russell. Loved him. Called Jack. Very imaginative. Mm. <laughs> Better than Russell. Better than Russell. Or yeah. fat. <laughs> True. True. He was massive. He was like a baby seal. I like a chubby dog, though. He was so big. Not so him. chubby. My dad used to have a, a Rottweiler <gasps> that got so fat, it um, uh, broke one of its knees no. getting up the stairs. Oh, bless. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. In a little mobility scooter. <laughs> they needed like um, uh, like a Gillian McKeith, but for dogs. Yes. Ralph's on a diet at the minute, my dog. Is he? So I took him to the vet and she was like, oh, he's big. I thought, he's not, he's not big. And then she felt him again and she was like, oh, he's quite big. And I was like, well, that's escalated very quickly. Do you I, feel, did you get in defense of your dog? Yeah, like, don't I body like, shame um, my dog. Actually, he's just quite curvaceous and he's got a healthy <laughs> appetite. And, you know, he, he get, gets anxious so he doesn't run as far as the other dogs. And <laughs> um, she was like, he should be able to feel his ribs. And I was like, mm, that feels too skinny. That feels too skinny. Yeah. And I was like, I can feel his ribs. I just have to press. A little bit. <laughs> Just want to really squeeze. Um, so he's on a diet at the minute. And he's what not is it? Happy. What is a dog diet like? So though? you feed them less, and then they look at you like they hate you. Oh, great! Which is pretty much. Yeah. I put his food down, and he's, he's looking at me like that's not that's a snack. That's I, not my main meal, and I'm like, come on. I still yeah. pay the cheese tax. I've not stopped the cheese tax. So that's any time cooking with cheese, cheese, he has to get yeah. a little bit of cheese. He has a little to bit pay of the cheese. cheese tax. Yeah, but um. Like less treats and everything, and I've that's so such bad. a horrible thing to say. So bad. I love a treat. Exactly. Dogs love treats. Exactly. Yeah. And then um, he was at Monkey Barra last night, and uh, the lovely Chris Forbes was having a burrito, and Ralph just sat oh. and stared, and I was like, "Oh, he wants, he wants that." And the last, he cannot. He have just it. loves that pulled pork. He does. He's, Bless him. He loves a Greg sausage roll, which arguably could have been the source of the. Yeah, problem. I am starting to see why he might have put <laughs> yeah. on the weight. 
Just burritos and sausage Burrito rolls. Burritos and sausage rolls. That was the only time that dog has ever growled at me. He's a good, he's a very gentle, placid dog. He is actually, yeah. And I've, I'd never had a dog before, so I was like, dude, this is my first time. If I mess it up, I do apologise. Mm-hmm. But I thought I'd done a really good job with him. And there was one day, he's about one, I was walking him around my flats and he went into a bush and I couldn't get him out. Like, I'm pulling and yeah. I'm pulling and he's not coming out. And I was like, Ralphie, pull it. And he emerged with a Greg sausage roll in his mouth. That's someone had obviously like chucked in the bush. So I was like, drop it. You wouldn't drop it. So I thought, just fine, carry it, bring it with you. So he's carrying this Greg sausage roll all the way around. <laughs> we get back in the flat. I went to take it off him. He thought it was a game. I thought, right, I'll just get him into the flat and I'll get it off him. And I went to take it off him. And he growled. Only time he's ever growled. So the only thing that dog has ever resource guarded was a Greg sausage roll. And I thought, you know what? I can't, I, I can't be too mad at that. I can't I believe can't. someone threw a sausage roll just in a solid sausage roll. I felt like three quarters. They had like one bite and obviously going, oh, I don't want that. And my dog was like, I love it. Wow. I well, it's it. nice that he's not precious. Exactly. You know, he'll eat. He's a resourceful king. Yeah. He will, from yeah. farm to, no, what is it? I always say this wrong. <laughs> not farm to mouth. Farm uh, to table. Oh, yes. Table locally. S- <laughs> the famous Greg's Pig Farms. <laughs> Locally sourced. Sometimes I know what I mean and it doesn't matter if anyone else understands. <laughs> um, so now you're you're a dog mum. Yes. Do you call yourself a dog mum, a dog parent? I do. I call myself a single parent, which single really parent. does infuriate quite a lot of genuine... Um, even at Monkey Barrel last night, I was like, I couldn't get childcare. Couldn't, couldn't get, get childcare. Couldn't get childcare. Yeah. And I take the piss. I know he's not my child, but I do feel very motherly towards them well yeah because it's something that you would look after yeah. and like you're responsible for them i would feel the same way about like um like a tamagotchi yes or a pokemon that is true yeah that's very true mm-hmm. oh i'm nearly at level 37 on pokemon go look at you go, you go. that's actually really good i'm getting back into it yes. now sorry lots of people are gonna hate this bit <laughs> They just updated it so that you can change, like, your avatar so it looks a bit different. Um, and everyone's saying that the avatars aren't sexy anymore. Oh, no. Like, they're not fit. Like, the, the, the female... Because I was really playing Pokemon well, to they... up my sex appeal. <laughs> well, I mean, like, there's something that got me into the game. And then I said, you know. But the female avatar, everyone's being like, oh, she's lost her curves and now her face is just, like, this ah. weird sort of, like, egg. And, uh, egg. <laughs> and like, I, like, I opened it up. She's like, oh, I wonder if it's that bad. And I was just like... Oh, I look a bit like a sort of like a, a oh, magician that's fell on hard times. I did think I looked paler. Maybe this is why. Lots of people said that if they feel paler. I looked paler. Look yeah. like me, son, fake tan. Son, fake tan. fake tan. They don't have that option in the game, do they? I to wish put on they a fake did. tan. I wish they did. Unless you make a hard commitment would to you a like different one race. Coating of Bondi Sands. <laughs> yes, I would. An inoffensive coating of Bondi Sands. An inoffensive. Is exactly what I would like. Yes, that's what is on the menu. Yeah. Inoffensive, please. Um, so you so you do call yourself a when you feel like it. Do you was there any impetus that made you get Ralph in particular? Were you seeking some kind of companionship or did you just feel it like I'm just gonna get a dog? It was the lesbians. <laughs> it was the lesbians. Do you know um not to name drop another podcast on a podcast, but yeah. Trusty Hogs? I've heard of them. So I was doing Trusty yes. Hogs and it was at the stage of lockdown where I was running out of things to say on lockdown gigs. <laughs> there was only so many times I could sit there and be like, these are some things in my room. Like, I ran out of jokes, and then I was like, these are things in my room. And I was on Trusty Hawks, and um, a lovely audience of, like, gay, lesbian, queer, yeah, fantastic yeah, yeah, yeah. audience. Lovely and I was people. like, if there's an audience I can trust the opinion of, it's these people. Yeah. And so I showed them the picture of the dog that I'd found online, which was Ralph, and I was like, should I get this dog? And they were like, get the dog, get the mm-hmm. dog. And I was like, well, I can't. I can't say no. I've got to listen to the people. Yeah. So I got the dog. And then the next gig I did, I think I had him with us. And I was like, look, I got the puppy. But um, it wasn't just that. I'd, I'd moved into a flat on my own for the very first time. Okay, I'd never yeah. lived on my own before. And I was like, I'm a strong, independent woman. I don't need flatmates. I don't need anyone to live with. And then after three months, I was like, man, I'm lonely. <laughs> 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 man, there is no one to talk to in this flat. <laughs> and it was the horrible winter stage of that lockdown. Mm. It's the end of... 2020 and I was just thought oh, if there's if there's ever a time like this isn't just me making a rash lockdown decision I've wanted a dog for ages um and so I had a look and I found a perfect I thought yeah. well, I'm gonna get one and I picked Ralph because he had a little white paw and I was like oh he's got like a little his skin's different and my skin's I've got psoriasis so I'm patchy and I was like look <laughs> at us being patchy together and um he's great but when the guy dropped him off so I went to the house to view it, view it, view him, view my son. Um, and I was like, I love him. I love him so much. 
And then when the guy dropped him off, his brother still hadn't got home yet. He brought right. the brother as well. And I was this close to being like, just give me the other dog too. <gasps> give me two dogs. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it was so cute. And then, But then he left. And I had this sudden realisation that I was 28 years old and never had a pet before. And then suddenly I've just... Just had a pet. You've just got a pet now. Just had a pet. First thing he did, he took one look at us and pissed on the floor. And I was like, welcome. Welcome home. Um, (laughs) Make yourself comfortable. But um, it's great. The only thing I messed Mm. up with, though, the first night, everyone was like, he won't sleep. He won't sleep the first night. And it'll be stressful. He slept like a baby. And I was like, my dog's very advanced. Like, he's he's over that state. That second night, he screamed. And he screamed oh. and he screamed. I had a headache. I had a migraine. I didn't feel well. I had nobody to ask. I asked Instagram. I, I shouted for the lesbians. They didn't come. I was like, this is... They seldom where do. Where were they? I leaned out the window and did the chant and they did not arrive. And I was like, no. What was the chant? Lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> like the Domino's ad, yeah. but for a different service. I was like, you convinced me to get this dog. <laughs> and I put on Instagram, I was like, what can I do? And everyone was like, put a puppy playlist on Spotify to like soothe them. There's like puppy music. Um, put your dressing gown in because he was in his pen, but in my room. Yeah. Put him. Um, put the dressing gown in the pen. Lie next to him. They were like, whatever you do, just don't let him in the bed. Like, mm. Don't let him in the bed. Within half an hour, I had that dog in the bed and he was asleep. And I thought, I don't care. I don't care. Like surely this choice I've made now will not come back to bite me on the mm. ass. That dog <laughs> will not sleep anywhere but my bed. He uh. will not. It is, and I don't mind it. But then you get a boyfriend, and they get quite grumpy about it. They can find another place exactly. to sleep. Exactly. I'm like, you go sleep in the dog bed. Yeah. You go sleep. There is a spare bed. Exactly. It has bed in the name. It's a bed. That's, that can be your room. And yes. this is mine and Ralph's room. But um, yeah, he is. he doesn't like sleeping in the bed when it's summer. He's like, I'm too hot. Too hot. Too hot. That's but, fair um, enough. I do think that choice I made at two, well, he wasn't two days old. He was 10 weeks old. Has, yeah. has had lingering repercussions mm. that I did not anticipate do you, it would. Do you feel like you and him now have like a sort of like language between do you have like a way that you can communicate? Like yes. if he like makes a certain bark, yes. you know that means oh, he wants he wants his yeah, cheese or exactly. he needs a walk. Exactly. There's like an attention bark and then there's just like a some I've heard something outside bark and I'm like, I know, I speak your language. Yeah. I speak. Mm-hmm. But he's he's great. He's a good boy. Have you seen those, um, they're videos of people who buy these buttons the that buttons. you put on the floor and you teach you the teach dog to the use talk. the button. So I yeah. got one buzzer. Now, you've met Ralph. Ralph I is have. lovely, but possibly the most anxious dog I have ever met in my life. Sure. <laughs> like he's, he's lovely. He's very, he's me as a dog. Uh-huh. He's lovely. He's friendly. And then he gets in an unfamiliar situation. And he's like, oh, I don't like this. <laughs> And so I got one buzzer to try and teach him. So I thought, I'll just teach him. And I feel like, you know, if you, I teach him to press it and maybe yeah. give him a treat for it. Mm-hmm. And then that's how you build it up. Yeah. That dog wouldn't even touch that buzzer. He was like, oh, God, I and don't know And was the buzzer just is. like, if he presses it, treat? Yeah. So it would go like, ding dong, like a little yeah. doorbell. And then I was going to give him a treat. So I was using his paw to press the buzzer. And you could see he was just like, Ugh. I don't like this. And I thought, I don't think my dog's going to learn to talk. So we're not getting to a point where he's got like a full keyboard. I know. I follow that dog on Instagram. She's great. She can like, she can ask like, where's Savannah? Which is yeah. the, the mom's yeah. daughter. So like her sister, I suppose. I don't know their dog's family tree. Mm-hmm. But like, so she knows who the different humans are in the yeah. family. And I just thought, oh, I can't, sometimes, you know, like when you see the police dogs, I sometimes mm-hmm. think, I wish my dog had a job. Which, <laughs> like, I really, but I can't imagine what job Ralph would be suitable for. I hate to say it, I think it would be something in, like, office administration. Yeah, yeah, Ralph, he wouldn't be a good drugs dog. Did you see about that drugs dog that got fired because it just wanted to be petted by everybody? I think that would be Ralph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would not be able to sniff out anything, but he'd be like, hey, friend, hey, and then he'd get fired and then he'd be sad. He would only, like, you know, chase the, the, like, the rude drug dealers. Yeah, he would. A lot of them are very friendly people. Exactly. Clear. Yeah, exactly. I see the videos of the dog buttons all the so time, clever. and I don't know if this was a true one. I think somebody might have been taking the piss a bit, but it was like uh, they had all the buttons, and then the, there was like, "I've trained it to talk." Um, look, I'll ask it. Um, uh, Jerry, do you want to go out for a walk? And then Jerry will like tap the buttons, and it will go like, "No, stay home. Feed oh. me meat, bitch." <laughs> And I was like, I just probably wouldn't put the word bitch yeah. in, in the button. Training your dog to be Andrew Tate. Yeah. 
Give me podcast mic. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my hat? <laughs> this is actually the exact conversation I had with Monkey Barrow to let me do this. Yeah. So, um, oh, well, that, but it is, so you do feel like, do, do you ever get, because obviously doing this as a job, mm-hmm. you have to sometimes let Ralph yes. stay with other people yeah. or have other people to look at. Do you ever like get a little bit jealous? Oh, 100%. So he is very good with, He's obviously stay with my boyfriend and he'll stay with my parents. Anyone yeah. else I don't think he would stay with or he'd be quite arsy about it. He'd be arsy. But that dog, the way he goes up, it's full grandparent vibes. Full grandparent. His little tail's going, he's smiling. Yeah. He's his paws on their shoulder, giving them hugs. And they're like, oh, where's my sweet boy? I'm like, what? Where, what is this? Where is this come from? And These Ralph just goes with oh, it. Oh, he loves it. Bit of a you slut. the two people who said, oh, I don't think you should get a dog. Oh, we're not bothered if you get a dog. Mm. And they worship the ground that those little poles yeah. walk on. He's there right now. He's at Grandma and Granddad's. And I thought, mm. he'll be getting spoiled. Spoiled rotten. Spoiled. He'll be getting fed custard creams, which probably has also contributed to why he's on his diet. <laughs> we had to have firm words. I went, no more custard creams. And my mum was like, I just give him a half. And I was like, well, you don't. You well, don't. Sorry, I love that she says, I just gave him a half, as if it's like a, like, like a pill. Yeah. <laughs> I just, Add half, see how he felt. I just dropped a half of a bourbon. Oh. <laughs> when his tail stopped wagging, I gave him the other half. <laughs> do you ever, this might be a bit of a weird question, do you ever wonder what Ralph would be like if he was a person? Yeah, I wonder what he would sound like. And I mm-hmm. think he'd sound very dopey. I think he'd have like a little toddler boy voice. Like, okay. I think he's, because yeah. people still think he's a puppy and they're like, oh, is he a baby? And I'm like, he's three. He just pretends to be a baby. He's been, so he's he seen be some stuff. he treated like a baby. He has been through it. Yeah. Um, but I do want, I would like them to be able to, you know, like the purge, not the dog purge. I don't want my dog to have a gun <laughs> one day a year, but I would like my dog to be able to talk one day a year. I don't know if the purge sure, was a good sure, comparison sure. for that. Something that okay, happens one yeah, day Maybe yeah. Doctor Doolittle where he talks yeah, to animals. Oh, yes, that's a good one. That is a <laughs> No, smart. but let's give the dog a gun. <laughs> let's give the dog a gun. <laughs> give my dog weapons one day a year and be like, who has wronged you? Yeah. Who has wronged you? It would be fascinating to find out who he thinks, like, his enemies are. Yeah. He's got one dog who lives near me who it really doesn't like. Just big box when he sees oh. them. And I'm like, mate, Because he's quite, he's not, I wouldn't think of him as a small dog, but no. he's, but he is small, I suppose. He's small, he's small to medium, I would say. Small yes. to medium, petite. Petite. He's petite. a petite boy. He'd he chop from Rachel Stevens' collection at M&S. Yes, he would, 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. Do you think now that you've had, so you've had him for? Three and a bit years now. So, so pretty much all of his life. Yeah. Yeah. Do I you, am his mother now. I, I wouldn't question it. <laughs> no, you birth him, you breastfeed him. Yeah. Of course, yes. Um, do you feel like um, it has changed, having a dog has like changed how you um, engage with other relationships in your life? Because sometimes people, when they start looking after something, yeah. they're like, oh, well... See, as a new mum, um, yes. actually have a lot of experience on like this type of relationship. Does you, do you feel like that has carried into any of your other relationships in life? I think because it was weird when I got the dog. I was like, I love this dog more than anyone, anything. Yeah, nobody else will and ever you compare. Were, were single. I was single, yeah. and then I got a boyfriend, and I was like, I love this dog more than anything and uh-huh. anyone. And you feel bad sometimes because I don't want my boyfriend to be aware that I love the dog more than him. But, um, <laughs> I don't do very much to make it not completely obvious. Sure. And then I feel bad because I'm like, well, surely I should love... And don't, of course, I love my boyfriend lots and lots and lots. But, like, mm-hmm. if you said to me one of them has to leave the house... Sure, yeah. I, th- I think I would pick Tom. It's one of those I things. Think. It's one of those things where because you'd be Tom like... could live next door and visit. Ralph doesn't know how to use a key. So if he leaves the house, he can't... Sure, he we can't can say all we like to justify it. But ultimately... <laughs> ultimately, I love It is one of those dog. things where it's like... Let's not ask the question because we're having a lovely day. Yeah. And you wouldn't like the answer. So let's just, <laughs> you know what the answer is. Let's just, let's just not say it. Yeah. Um, yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. One thing no one warned me about though. So I'm aware I've got quite a cute dog. Like, and I know everyone do, says that, yeah, but I have yeah, a very yeah. conventionally cute dog, very teddy bear looking. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I like chatting. I like people, but sometimes, you know, you just want to, you just want to go on your walk. You just want to walk that dog. Yeah. Do his poos. And go back home. Sure. And every single person wants to stop and talk to the dog. Because you've given yourself person. a talking point. And I'm like, why didn't I get a little ugly, scruffy dog? No one would have wanted to talk to him. Just a real munter of a I dog. Know, that, that would be my top tip to any listeners. Get an ugly <laughs> dog. Um, but everyone wants to stop. And sometimes it's nice because it's nice to have, That's part of the reason I got him in the first place. Uh, 
wanted an excuse to get out of the house sort of thing. So it was lovely. Now I don't need an excuse. I can leave the house whenever I like. Mm. And I don't want to have unnecessary conversations. And sometimes I'm like, oh, especially if they've got a dog, I'm like, this is nice because then I can look at your... If they don't have a dog, I'm like, you've got nothing to offer me. I'm gaining nothing from this transaction. (sighs) I get what you mean. (laughs) Growing up with dogs... And every time we take them for a walk, you would walk by someone in the field or on the yes. path. And at best, you would get like one of these, just like, hello. Yeah. You know, and we always do that. And then sometimes the dogs will have a little chat and then you sort of have to feel like you have to have a chat with the person and be like, yeah. listen, the dogs, the dogs are having a special relationship. Yeah, they can sniff each other's bums. Yeah. We don't have to, we don't even have to look at each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let and the dogs make fine. friends. I don't care if you live or die. Yes. I'll never see 100%. you again. And that's that. I am taking Ralph next month. Do you know Pop World? Are you aware of Pop World? Yeah. I'm taking Ralph. The rave. The, 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 the like, shitty club. <laughs> Where people, like, put, like, body glitter on and, like... I don't know if it's that one. Oh, okay. But it's a club. I think it's a chain of clubs, but they're very, like... They're quite oh, feral, Wait, I no, say. I've been to a Pop World... Uh, weird sentence. Yeah. I went to a Pop World when I was an intern at Goldman Sachs. Oh, very nice. Very nice. How off brand. <laughs> but um, I am, um, yeah, 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 I remember going with like some of the other interns. Yeah, Sticky Floor, that kind of place. Sticky Floor. Sticky Floor, cheap drinks, cheesy music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, they are putting on a puppy party in the day. So I'm taking my dog to Pop World as prizes for best dressed. You best believe I'm going to dress that boy up. Oh, let's you get into believe. dog fashion. Absolutely. Ralph does not like a hat. Does okay. Not like a hat. You try and put a hat on that boy's head, not Fran. But like... But he'll wear like a Santa suit. He'll wear that. Love. He had a raincoat at one point, but I've never seen a dog look depressed until I put that <laughs> raincoat on him because it was like a little clear see-through Mac. And when he walked, he just went like... <laughs> like it was squeaking as he walked. And those eyes just said, kill me, kill me. And I was like, okay, no oh, raincoat. Bless. He's got a He's got a bark house. Yeah. Like a bird house, but a bark house for when it's cold. That's very cool. a bark house. But um, no, he likes a jacket. He's a jacket. He's dog. a jacket kind of guy. Yeah. So we're not going to see him at Pop World, like maybe wearing like a little tube top. No, I don't Little really denim like mini skirt, a little thong peeking out the Ooh, top. Oh, maybe I might try a little skirt on him. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. You, will you coordinate with him? Oh, absolutely. Match. Absolutely. We're going to be twinning. We're going to light up that dance floor at 10 a.m. on a Saturday. In Pop World. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was with you until 10 a.m. My concern is. Is Pop World going to be clean and safe? <laughs> From it's three no, a.m. till ten a.m. No, I don't think they're no. going to turn. I worked in bars. I worked in clubs. I do not think that is good enough turnaround time. Safe enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That a, dog is going to find all sorts on the floor. I the I the there was a club in Falmouth in Cornwall. Yeah. That I used to I went to once or twice and um, carpeted. Oh no. Oh, that no. floor has absorbed a oh, lot of um, fun times. I worked in a pub right by like St. James's Park football grounds. Yes. Um, so it was one of the closest pubs we'd get. And we were a sports pub. So obviously match days would be heaving. Oof. And there was one day, it'd been a really tough day. And yeah. then a guy won on the fruit machine. And he came and gave me like probably about 20 quid in pound coins. And he went, that's for you. And it was near Christmas. And when you think, oh, this job isn't all bad. Yeah. There's good people out there. My faith in humanity is restored. And then I went down to do a toilet check just as somebody was projectile vomiting on the stairs. And Stunning. I was like, no. Yeah. No. I was lucky. I never had to clean the, the toilet. The Lord gives and he takes away. <laughs> <laughs> no, sometimes I would have to take the... Um, I'd have to take the empty bottles out to the recycling oh, bins. Oh, yes. But because um, it was... Out the bins were outside, and wasps are attracted to sugar. <laughs> I was just sent to like a wasp's nest every time. Every, day. every time. I can just imagine you in like a beekeeper suit. <laughs> they did. My dad. My dad gave me like. G- they gave me like really oversized gloves to wear, and he was yeah. like, "It's so that you don't get like any like broken glass in your hands or yeah. anything." But I was like, also. The wasps, the wasps. All of the wasps. It's like sending you to do a Jumanji trial. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. If Jumanji was on a much lower budget. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Instead of the rock, it's just the pebble. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a real pebble, like one of those hollow ones you get to hide your keys in. Yeah. Yeah. I'm full oh. of secrets. Um, do you... Would you say you are solely a dog person? Or do you think... At some point in your life, there may be room for another animal of some sort. I like a cat. 
So you do, do quite like a cat. My goodbye. friend, my lovely friend Michael has got yeah. a cat and I was playing with her, but cats aren't, I find on you don't play with a cat the same as you play with a dog. So with a cat, I'm never sure at what point it's going to turn on me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I can read a dog's body language, but with a cat, I'm just like, we're having, and I'll think as well, cats turn like that. So they're like, we're having fun, we're having fun. Now I hate you. Yeah. And then um, she like bit me, but not like a proper bite, like just like a mouth bite. So I was like, right, well, if Ralph did that in me, I'd know it's playful, but I don't know if it's playful for a cat. So I just stopped playing with her, but then I was worried I'd upset her. So I had to text and be like, um, your cat just bit me, but I think it was a playful bite. And he's like, oh, no, yeah, that's playing. Like, okay. she does that to people she likes. And I was like, bitch, come back here. <laughs> the fun can start again. <laughs> but um, very different. Cats are very much. I like a dog because I'm needy. So, like, me and Ralph are very, very needy so together. So you both give each other, like, exactly. the same amount of affection. He wants to be adored. I want to be adored. He wants to eat shit off the street. I want to eat shit off the street. We get on very well. I feel like cats are too aloof. They're like, bye, I'm just going out for eight hours. Maybe maybe see you, maybe not. It is very mm. much like that. I you think put... I would need an indoor cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One that's, that, you know, can't leave. But then I'd feel a bit like, am I am I keeping you prisoner? Do you know you're an Do you want to be an indoor cat? So my friend Karen has an indoor cat. Oh. Well, it, he's not an indoor cat in the sense that he goes outside. So... <laughs> <laughs> so. So he's not so just a cat. cat. <laughs> but he spends most of his time, it, like, in and around the house. Ah, There's a garden. So it's just a lazy cat. Like, maybe Mildly let's, agoraphobic let's say, like, cat? docile. Docile. I don't think he gets along with all of the cats that live in yeah. that next door houses. Mm. So, like, I would say he keeps himself to himself. And I, I love him. Yeah. Every time I stay with Karen, I go down to London. Um, I always see him. Aww. I always go like, "How's my?" I I am referred to as his uncle because oh, I'm not nice. his dad. But we, for some reason, we say it in French, and I can't remember why. Oncle, l'oncle, l'oncle, l'oncle pair is here. <laughs> so I and so the and so he'll turn up, and it will if I'm staying for like two nights or whatever. Yeah, it will be like a good day and a half before he goes like, "Okay, you're here." I see you're still here. <laughs> In that case, I think it would be best if I just sat on your lap Aww. and fell asleep. That and is cute. And then in maybe about 45 minutes, I will hear something and stand up very quickly and put my full <laughs> weight directly onto your genitals. Yes. And then I will extend my claws into That's your the, genitals it's the claws, as well. Isn't it's the claws. Yeah. It's like it's the little tapping and then the stuff. And then you think they've settled yeah. and then they go. And I'm like, oh, well, this is great, I guess. I'm bleeding, but we're having fun. Yeah, I'm bleeding. But you know what? What are the few scars between best friends? My ex had a cat and that was my like introduction to cats. Mm. And I was so desperate for her to love me. So desperate. And there was one, we were just starting to bond. She was just starting. I think, like you say, she was like, all right, this one's sticking around. Yeah. And then she was on a, like, showed her tummy one day. And I was like, no, with dogs, when they do that, it's because they trust you. So I tickled her tummy. And when I say... I was scratched within like half a second. That, that paw came at me yeah. like a ninja. My ex just went, oh yeah, she doesn't like a tummy touch. And I was like, maybe a heads up. Would have been nice. I think the same with children. Yeah. Volatile. Oh, he's just started doing this thing where like, um, if you give him anything, he will just like smack you around the head with it yeah. and then laugh. It's just a phase. And I'm like, mm. My brother would do that because my brother's 12 years younger than me. So I remember when he was um, yeah. a little baby and he used to do this thing where he'd come over to you, he'd, like, hold your hand and be like, oh, and then he'd put your hand in his mouth and you'd be like, <laughs> okay, yeah. you little weirdo. And then he'd bite down and then you'd go, ow, uh-huh. because the child's biting you. And then he'd look up at you, laugh, and then bite harder. And how many bodies did they find? <laughs> <laughs> Mind, I used to scratch my sister's eyeballs. <laughs> My sister's eight years older than me. What did you say? Sorry. Scratch her eyeballs. You, your dad? No, my sister. Oh. <laughs> this has become a different kind of confessional. Sorry. Yeah. What I heard was, oh yeah, my dad used to scratch my sister's no, eyes out. No. Um, <laughs> so she was eight years old. I saw she, when I was born, I think she was like, great, it's yeah. a doll, this is amazing. And she would like be so good with me and I'd repay her by simply lashing out at her eyes. Huh. Yeah. I, ha- I won't say the name of the friend, but I did have a friend who told me that f- I, it's funny now, um, <laughs> but um, they um, they wear glasses like me. Oh, These are glasses. Yes. Very brave of me to admit. Very brave. Um, and apparently it's like a form of punishment. If they like misbehaved or something, their mum would take their glasses no. away. <laughs> so they just had to be. Well, if you can't behave and you can't see. I don't know about that. <laughs> Go have a long, hard look at yourself. If you can. (laughs) 
if you can determine which of the three <laughs> fuzzy shapes is you. <laughs> So that brings up an interesting point, though, because obviously there will be times where Ralph is not 100% a good boy. Yeah. Have you had an easy time, like, learning to, like, discipline him? Or do you just, like, let him get away with it? I sort of, I was a bit soft at first, and then the barking was getting quite bad. And obviously mm. I live in a flat, so then you start to worry, you're like, I ain't just got one neighbour, I've got... A neighbor above, a neighbor below, yep. a neighbor. I'm in a Rubik's cube of neighbors. This is, <laughs> this is hell. And so I got a. I tried everything. Tried everything. I just couldn't get them to stop barking. So I got. I have, this is just recalled a memory. I got a dog trainer. Yeah. Um. And I just said having a bit of trouble. I was like with like um the barking and stuff. And she was like right. And so she took me out with them. And she was brilliant. She was really good. But she made me get like um. She was like, if you got something that can squirt, like a squirty bottle, like a honey yeah, bottle. Yeah, yeah. And I had like a Lucasade bottle. And she went, right, put some water in that trim. We're going to take him out. And she said, and if he barks, you go, bah! and you squirt him on the back of the neck, just on the back of the neck. On the back of the neck, and so not went, in his face or Not anything. in his face, in the okay. back of his neck. And I was like, right, okay. And she was like, the whole thing as well, sort of preempting whether we sometimes yep. you want to get ahead of when they do it too. And I was like, okay, okay. And so he barked at another dog. So as he did it, I went, but, and I squeezed the Lucas bottle, but I squeezed too hard. And Ra- and because I went, but, Ralph turned to look at it. So I just swilled Ralph. Oh. In the <laughs> and I fell off and she went, yeah, so maybe not that much water next time. <laughs> and I was like, he had like little water dripping off his whiskers and his eyebrows. And he was just looking at me like, what the fuck? Like, what? Oh. But um, weirdly, it did work. But then it got really good. And it was things like if if the doorbell went or something, it would be bad. And I was worried about when I was not in. Yeah. Got him really good with it. And then I went to Edinburgh for a month and he went to live with grandma and granddad. Uh, but yeah. um, I've noticed some little naughtiness creeping back in, but I'm going to... I'm going to get back on top of it. Because okay. you, you never want to be... And she taught me as well, when you tell them off, you should never say their name. Because then they associate their name with being a bad thing. So if, oh. if I go like Ralph, then he associates Ralph with being... <gasps> so then, you yeah. That's fascinating. Yeah, and I was like, oh, I hadn't thought of that. So that's why she told me to go like, bah! Bah! <laughs> so it's just me walking around like yeah. a very disgruntled English gentleman going, yeah. bah! Every time he, he barked. But it did work, oh. it did work. It, like I say, it's creeping back in. But I think it's because I've stopped going, bah! Every time he... <laughs> there must be times where you're just like, I really don't feel like the full performance of going, bah! Exactly. So I, I might just let you get away with And I had a beanbag I had like... to throw as well because the, the noise apparently distracts him. And I was like, I'm not going looking for a beanbag every time that dog barks. Yeah. No, no, but he is pretty good. But yeah, he does get in a huff if you tell him off. He turns his back on you. I can see that. Turns but I mean, like, well, I mean, the few times I've met him, he's always been lovely. Yes, he's very, very chill. He's a very nice dog. I remember him, like, waiting at the bedroom door for you to get up, and I was like, dude, that's creepy. (laughs) Uh, Who wouldn't? (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, to sum up, then, your relationship with dogs, this is your first dog, you didn't have dogs growing up. No. So this is sort of like, you know, you're a a first-time mum. I am, first-time mum. Do you think what if I if you just think about not necessarily just Ralph but just like dogs in general like if you had to describe how like a dog makes you feel what kind of words come to mind? I feel like I'm a lot more content with animals than I am with people, mm, and I think it's because I don't yeah. have to have a conversation so I can be with them and I can show them I like them, but without having to actually speak which i think is yeah. a lot more i'm not very good in social situations and i'm always worried about saying the wrong thing doing the wrong i can't say the wrong thing to a dog yeah because he can't understand me so, yeah he doesn't write yeah. reviews for short he what's he gonna not. do he does no. not one time i did bring him to a gig and as i started telling the joke about the tories he barked right on cue and i thought oh, you could stay yeah you can stay yeah 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 but i find being in his presence very like if, if i had to think of my top three people or animals who I would want to be with. Like, Ralph would definitely be my top three. Yeah. I would like everyone. I just find him very comforting. He's great. And there was one time I was sad and I cried. And he mm. came and he put his paws on my shoulder and he licked the <gasps> tears away. And I was like, you are an angel. You are an bark however much you want. I don't care. He licked the tears away. Oh, and he there was, was one... incredibly thirsty. Very. He was like, mmm, salt. <laughs> There was one time I had a friend round upset and she cried and he did the same thing to her, but she didn't find it as cute as I did. Yeah, I think you maybe saw like that he's doing this because he knows, he knows that I'm I'm hurting. Yeah. But then if it's somebody else, then it's just like, no, he just, um, yeah. he's just like a freak. He's weird. He's just weird. He's, he's quite literally licking tears out of my eyeballs. <laughs> People, sorry. Are you guys okay? <laughs> little taste buds on his tongue just <laughs> 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 okay. I do a 
apologize <laughs> for ruining what was a lovely moment between you and your son. Just accidentally revealed that I actually don't actually hydrate him at all. <laughs> if you want a drink, you have to make mammy cry. <laughs> No, you're a responsible mother. Let, I'll make that clear. <laughs> we did do that thing once where, have you ever seen where people give their dogs sparkling water instead to say how they react? No, I've never seen that. <laughs> we are on different sides of TikTok. <laughs> we did it, we put a little bit of sparkling water in a bowl and obviously they go with thinking it's water and he had a lick and he's like, eyes ah, were... And then he went back to it and I was like, oh, we'll get him on off menu. He knows, whether, you... <laughs> he wants, he knows whether he wants still or sparkling. Well, do you think he could... Do you think he... Um... Is it dogs? Dogs? Oh, it's never made a noise before. Ooh. It's the timer to tell me to wrap up. Um, not that I'm having. <laughs> when I'm not freak. insulting your parenting You're skills. <laughs> do you think there's a chance that maybe he? Um, why do I think that dogs maybe have like not as brilliant a memory? Yeah. And so like he might have had the water and gone. That's not. <laughs> That's different. That's not that's not normal water or mummy special water. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know what's happening here, but I don't like that. And then he'll turn away and do something and then come back and be like, oh, there's water. I'll yeah. Give that. yeah. Yeah. He might have just. Very goldfish. Very goldfish brain. I'd love to know how much they can remember. Yeah. I, I did. I was going to say, um, I think I've read, <laughs> read. I saw a TikTok <laughs> where somebody said um, that. The reason that, like, you know, you, you, people often feel like, oh, my dog's my best friend. Yeah. Is because, just like some of the stuff that you've said, when you're having, like, a little low moment and the dog comes over yeah. and does something and you maybe, like, you talk to the dog as if it's a person, but obviously they can't talk back to you. So really what you're doing is having um, a little bit of a word with yourself. Yes. And the dog is, like, oh, a vessel a for that. I did actually try and learn to talk to him once because I read... I did actually read. It wasn't... I actually read this. Oh. Like, you know, when they sigh, when they go, like... <sighs> Like when they sigh, that means they're happy. Oh. So that means they're content, they're happy. So I thought, does that mean if I sigh at him? Yeah. If I make that noise at him, will he know that I'm happy? He'll think you're happy. happy. So he like sighed and then I went and sighed back and then he went and sighed back. And then the two of us are just sighing at each other like a divorced couple. (laughs) And Tom was like, can you both stop heavy breathing? I was like, we're not heavy breathing. We're expressing our love for each other. That's our thing, actually. He gets it from me. He gets his breathing from me. And then I read a really sad thing, but um, Ralph brings my clothes through all the time if I'm gone. And obviously it's because it's got the smell on. But then I was doing a bit Googling about it. Apparently, once your dog can no longer smell you, around the house or say like if I was to go to Edinburgh for a month or something yeah. they think you've died oh. once they lose the smell of you and then what think... happens when you come back th- that dog loses his mind <laughs> they're just like no you're dead he's this like oh my god happening. it's like a sixth sense <laughs> it's like Dirty Den coming back in East yeah. Enders oh what? well I, all what of my what a lovely love, note to end on what a lovely when note to end on when your dog can't smell you anymore when things get dead <laughs> well, enjoy your hooch <laughs> All of my love to Ralph. Yes. Um, one little thing to do with you before we let you go. Of course. And enjoy the rest of your day here. Um, it's called Quick Fire Feelings. Oh, lovely. I just say some random topics. You just tell me very briefly how they make you feel. Perfect. Okay? And the first one, everyone gets asked this one. Yes. How do you feel about dark chocolate? Love. You Big love. Big fan. Big More fan. More people seem to love it than hate I it. I really like dark chocolate. In any particular form? Uh, give me a Bourneville any day. I got a Velvetizer for Christmas. <gasps> So Aren't let they me incredible? let me velvetize that shit. Yes, please. I'm a milky Love. man. I do a fifty, Ooh, a little fifty percent, or the flavored ones. There's a banoffee flavor out at the minute. Stop it. Which I'm very tempted to try. Fuck off. Banoffee. Yeah. So it came up as suggested for you, and I was like, damn right, I'll give them. That's arrested, arrested for me. Suggested for me. I'm gonna go to the shop and get some yeah. after this. Banoffee, banoffee. I didn't know they brought out new flavors. They have. They usually tell me. I'm a VIP <laughs> at Hotel Chocolat. Um, how do you feel about Cheryl Cole? Love her. Love her. Love her. Where I lived in Heaton when I was at uni, the um, Chinese takeaway had a picture in the window because I think when she did X Factor, she'd gone to the, the takeaway there. She must have done. I think she's I'm great. sure she did. My f- another of my favourite um, TikToks is any videos of Cheryl Cole on like um, the ghost. What was it, the ghost hunters with Derek Just tap the fucking table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big fan. Famously, the reason my Cheryl Cole impression is in the show is because yes. I ad libbed it and then sent it to you. To give me notes on, and you're oh, like, I told you, keep it, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, keep it in, yeah, and that's why it's there. Good. How do you feel about tough mudder? Oh no, no, no. I wouldn't mind like an easy mudder, but tough mudder just sounds <laughs> a gentle mudder. <laughs> gentle mudder. 
anything that's got that like Bruh, this is going to be hard I'm like well, not for me then no no not no, no. I've, d- I've done it once yeah 13 miles really? got tear gassed at one point oh god yeah tear gassed <laughs> And they were just like, yeah, Was but that like part it's. Of it or just. I didn't know I brought it from home. Yeah. No, you crawl into like a little tent. You have to like crawl, but then there's tear gas in the tent. What? You also start off like you run a mile and you get dunked in ice cold water, and oh. I stopped breathing. And then they were just like, no, stay in the water. And I was like, I can't breathe. There's no, I'm not for me. I like a fun run. Mm. It's not fun, but at least they call it a fun run well, to make you feel like it's. I, I tolerate I've done the, the run. I've done the Great North Run three times and I've never been tear-gassed. I was going to say, you're a bit of a runner. Yeah, I've never been tear-gassed at the Great North Run. There's <laughs> always this year. There's always a chance. Are you running it again? I am. You yeah. are for charity, aren't I you? I am, yes. Which charity? I run for Calm, which is a mental health charity. Definitely look up. Yes. I, you must have a Just Giving or something. I do. We'll pop a link Or you can catch it. me running around the meadows every day in August. Lovely. I have to keep up my training. Yeah, you've got to. Yes. You must. Um, how do you feel about a crisp sandwich? Love. Yeah. Love. I've gotten yes. into them recently. Oh my God. It has to be thick white bread. Like okay, thick white yeah. bread. Low pack. Got to be low pack. I'm sorry. Thick. I know we're in a cost of living. We're not doing Marge. There's some things doing... you just can't compromise no. on. Doesn't matter what brand of bread. Sacrifice on the bread to make up for the Absolutely low pack. Absolutely speak your truth. And then um, crisps. I think it's got to be ready salted, salt and vinegar or prawn cocktail. Interesting. Got to be Classics. nice strong flavour. I've been... Um, Sometimes for lunch, I'll make myself like a little chicken sandwich. Ooh. And then I will put a layer of Doritos Chili Heat Waves. Heston Blumenthal. Eat your heart out. What can I say? Like, I am a foodie. Yeah. Yeah. I used yeah. to do that with um, pasta bakes at university. I'd crush up ready salted crisps and put them on top so they went crispy. Yeah. And I remember being at a boyfriend's house, making that from one day. Because obviously, you know, you're at uni, you don't know how to cook, but like, that was my like thing mm. that I could make. <laughs> one of the girls just came in the kitchen and went, I thought I was poor until I saw that. And I was like, Excuse me? Ex- I was like, do not shit on my culture. A crisp sandwich yeah, is I I was a joy for any that. class. Exactly. I'm sorry, no, Crisps I won't have, have that. No, use some fancy, use some Seabrooks, use some Walker sensations. Yeah, if you have to, use Crisps, a kettle If there's chip, one yeah. thing you can learn from this podcast, crisps have no, no, no crisps they have don't. No class. Although there are a lot of truffle crisps popping up. Oh, yes. Truffle flavour, which I don't, I don't mind, but... Mm. I think there's something to be said about um, gentrification <laughs> there. Um, finally, how do you feel about sitting on a bus mm-hmm. and someone is listening to music with no headphones on? I hate, absolutely hate any public, public transport. I I think if I could have my dream job outside of comedy, it would be like keeper of the quiet coach oh, on the train. Because they don't respect it. They don't. And no. since COVID, it's gone because obviously they're understaffed. I appreciate that. But there's nobody patrolling that quiet coach. There used to be someone even just nipping through. And I don't like... I don't like when someone makes their day out your day out. I'm like, no. You listen to your music with your yeah. headphones. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear your phone call. No. People who are just having full on FaceTimes. Yeah. And just in on the train You carriage. have to speak up because I'm on the train. And I'm like, no, no, that doesn't mean speak up. No. Speak down. No. Unless it's something juicy. And then and, uh, do speak up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Record. Yeah. Put it out as a podcast. Yeah. I was going to say my anxiety has no limits, but um, the limit is... Oh, no, it does have limits. The limits are, if it's juicy, then my anxiety goes away. And I'm like, actually, yeah, I yeah. don't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mind. We love a bit of juice. We do. We love a bit of juice and a bit of hooch. Lovely. That brings us to the end of the episode. Amazing. What a lovely time if you what have a nice lovely, time. What a lovely little chat. Good. We should have more Saturday chats over a pooch. A pooch, a pooch and a hooch. Pooch. A pooch about pooch. Double pooching. Pooch about pooch. Now it's sounding weird, isn't it? it now, now it's sounding like a Pornhub category. <laughs> I'm not going to Google it. No. <laughs> Pooching. No, it definitely is a thing. Oh, no. Oh, no. What if this is going to attract the wrong audience? Well, we I hope you've enjoyed in if it was not what you expected. <laughs> yeah. You can come now. Um, <laughs> I'll close my eyes. <laughs> um, before we let you go, is there anything that you'd like to plug? Where can people follow you? Do you have uh, shows coming up? I'm going to be at the Edinburgh Fringe at the Monkey Barrel. Uh, all month apart from Wednesdays because I took Wednesday off so I could go home to see my dog mm, lovely. Um, very much so so he doesn't think I'm dead um, very imp- <laughs> crucially important and yeah. that will be Monkey Barrel half past twelve it's a nice midday we're early girlies yeah bring a crisp sandwich bring a crisp sandwich yeah, yeah. I always say this but I'm like bring in I mean I don't know if I'm bring meant to tell people snack. to bring in snacks but I'm like bring in hey, bring whatever. your lunch yeah. whatever and what's the show called Big Girl Pants. Big Girl Pants. Big Girl Lauren Pants. Lauren Pants and Big Girl Pants. Look out for it. Yes. Lovely. Well, Thank you for having me. You're so welcome. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. You can follow us at I've Had a Rosé. Um, please leave us a nice review. Um, 
Do I have to plug anything? Oh, I have a show at the Fringe. Yeah. Esmeralda, also at Monkey Barrel at one thirty. You could you could double end us. Back. No, not the yes. pooch people. Yep. That's not what I mean. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, thank you for listening. We'll see you for another episode very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>